And we are back, officially back, guys. After a very long hiatus in the middle of an island for six days, we are finally back. Yes, sir. We're back with mental peace. You guys might have not might have not noticed the hiatus because uh, the podcasts were pre-recorded. They were banging out on YouTube on every single exactly. platform. But uh, mental peace, uh, I have attained complete and utter mental <laughs> peace. And uh, we're going to talk about that in this podcast as well, alongside a lot of other things that have been happening over the last week that we were away. Crackdowns on Spotify playlists, a lot of other things. Instagram you know, like- verification, too. I want to talk about Instagram verification because a lot of artists are asking for it. And does it really matter if you're an artist that's verified or not? Like, let's find out. Let's break it in. Let's get yes, it. Yes, sir. Let's let's start with that, bro. Let's start with that. Let's start with Instagram verification. Uh, are you verified on Instagram? And uh, if you were, would have you know like would that have changed the, the the part of your career or the approach of people when they're looking at your page? So there's a few things that you have to be ready for when it comes to Instagram and Instagram verification. First of all, there's a lot of incentives and benefits for Instagram verification. There's literally, uh, you know, networking parties that only verified people can go to. It's really hilarious. There's like verified only parties. Um, th- those are really cool. I mean, you could go and network with other people that are verified and have some kind of social proof and credibility along with their name. So those kind of things are incentives. You just people people want to take you more seriously when you have a, uh, a blue check. Um, but if you were to telling me that someone is going to listen to your music, if you have a blue check, nah, bro, um, just because you have a blue check and you make uh, good music doesn't mean you're going to get the music marketed correctly or blow up overnight just because you have a blue check. So a lot of artists try to like, you know, get verified without actually having a fan base to support their verification. So if that makes kind of sense. Uh, what's your opinion on blue check? Oh, behind the scenes, I feel like blue check doesn't matter when you know, like a fan is approaching you yeah. as as a as a listener. But uh, but I feel like when a label is approaching you, when someone big is approaching you, a blue check would be really nice to have because they because that will show you show them that you are you know like an up and coming thing. You are big. They'll see you are unsigned, but still have a blue check, yeah. still have a good following, yeah, and correct. they'll throw you a better deal than they would have if you didn't have a blue yeah, check. It's so, leverage. Yeah, it's, it's social it's, proof that you are someone that's important. Um, and that's really big. That's really important for Instagram, for sure. That's what you need for verification as well. You need proof that you are someone, but you have to get that proof over on Google, over on you know like stuff like that, links. So uh, blog posts out, articles out and all of that stuff before getting verified. And after verified, people see that, you you know, like they don't have to check your articles, stuff like that, because people that have articles can only get verified. Do you think that Instagram verification is better if you do it through an agency or if it happens organically? I have seen a lot of people that deserve a blue check, not get a blue check because they were too stubborn to go through an agency. Yeah. But I feel like if you if you think you're personally that you have a big enough following, a hundred thousand followers, let's just say, who are active, you are actively getting, you know, like twenty to thirty thousand likes per post and you're still not getting verified, you know, like you might have to bring an agency in, you know, like to to look after those things for you because you yourself are not a team you're just an individual you have to get a team around you to play with these things to you know like get these things forward you can spend your time better producing music you know like editing music listening to new beats coming with coming up with lyrics and all of that stuff meeting with new people you don't have to you know like this this verification requests and all of that stuff it takes time because we do that in our own uh, marketing agency as well. Yeah. But these things take a lot of time. And these things, I feel like, personally cannot happen if you're an individual. you got to have a team behind you to look after these Listen, things. Listen, if you're an artist out there and wants to get verified and is trying to find a platform to get verified, I'm just going to break it down to you. It's super simple. I actually watched an interview on The Breakfast Club with the CEO of Instagram explaining how to get verified. Pretty much you need to have credibility. You need to have blog posts. As much as people don't think blog posts are relevant now, you still need to have them by actual businesses and brands and companies that are promoting uh, and, you know, have some kind of social proof. You know, Yahoo, Forbes, uh, Business Insider, Elevator, you know, all these specific media outlets. If you can get your name on these media outlets, you, you know, you are going to see success and you're going to see, you know, people are listening and people are watching you. And then automatically you're going to wake up to a blue check. So there's a lot of artists out there, you know, they get 100,000 followers and then they'll request uh, Instagram for a verification request. 
and they will be very, very, you know, disheartened because they never actually got it. And, you know, they have good music, they have good numbers, but they never actually got it. So if you're an artist out there, go through a distributor like CD Baby, um, uh, United Masters, Distro Kid, go through any, uh, even us, we have a distribution platform that you could go through as well. Um, but go through a distributor. As soon as you go through a distributor and post maybe like four to five songs, you get a Google panel. It just happens organically after posting four or five songs. Make sure your name isn't something like 42 dash 35 3000. You know, don't change, don't have your, don't have a super confusing name. Just have something like, you know, Lil Xan, you know, Lil X, whatever, you know, have a simple name. Your Google panel will show up organically, claim the Google panel and make sure all your links are on that Google panel. Eventually, when you start getting enough traffic, one song takes off, whatever, you start getting blog posts. Now, those blog posts you can pay for, you know, a couple hundred dollars to get a genius article from us. You know, you can pay for that. Um, if you want to get an article from Elevator, you can, you know, contact the editorial people over there and they'll, they, you know, you can pay for that. You know, it's a couple hundred dollars. But, you know, if you think it's worth it in the long run, you know, you can get that. So in overall, if you actually are serious about your brand, serious about, you know, your PR, you can do it yourself. But a lot of artists, you know, really don't have the time. They're, you know, busy. They have their own stuff they do. They need to do. They have to do the bookings for the shows, the music the production, music videos. There's a lot of things an artist has to do. So I really personally think that, you know, working with an agency, spending that extra amount, just a little bit extra to have the leisure of not going out of your way to find out how to get on all these brands and blogs and how to get all these Google panels stuff and everything like that. You know, it does make sense at the end of the day if you're trying to take your music to the next level and get verified and get noticed by more people for sure. And working with us, you're not working with individuals. You're working with the whole team. We're just, you know, like people for hire. Let's just yeah. say we're like mercenaries. You're hiring these this group of people like lawyers. We are going to back you up when you need when, when the need arrives. We're going to look after things for you because we have a lot of people that are masters in a lot of different things, a lot of different arts. Yeah. And people might be surprised about how much like famous people pay for their PR. Yeah. Most of the articles you're reading on, on Twitter, on, you know, like uh, on the Internet, most of the uh, most of the articles are paid for by these famous celebrities to keep them relevant because PR goes a long, long way. It isn't, you know, like a, a certain investment and return like that. It is a long term investment. It is a long term return. You get returns, you get benefits for a long, long time because of these PRs and uh, getting these PRs is really important. But uh, my question to you is you are not verified on Instagram. Are you? Uh, you, you are, I've but. been offered so many opportunities to get verified Instagram. I just like the other artists out there haven't really took it as a personal objective of mine to get verified. I worry about my clients more. You know, we own this company and, you know, it would be selfish of me to go out of my way to spend the hard earned money that artists paid for for their campaigns and go out of the, my way to fund my own verification request by paying by by the other artists, you know, supporting. So what I personally thought is, you know, if I make $10,000 for my music, then I could use that $10,000 to go ahead and start pushing for a verification request or a PR team to go ahead and push me and get me verified. That'd be cool. But I'm not going to rush the process. I'm very busy. Um, you know, you might be surprised how busy I'm actually am behind the scenes. I have so many things to worry about just before recording this podcast, I was literally stressing over 10 things. I just got like two phone calls. Like there's things I need to take care of. You know, the bigger part that I look at the bigger picture, you know, I'm cool. Uh, you know, I'll take care of myself. I'll run my own marketing campaigns. Cool. But the bigger picture is taking care of our clients and making sure every single one of them has the best experience when they come to our agency and every single dollar that they spend is run uh, is used to run their own marketing agency, uh, you know, uh, their own sorry, their own music campaigns. So we really want to make sure that everything is really set up for them. A lot of artists want to do things beside music as well. You have your own marketing agency, you're an entrepreneur, you, you do a lot of different stuff yeah. as well. How is life, you know, like in that position that you have your music to take care of as well and you have your business to take care of? I as love well? expressing myself as a, like, you know, just in different ways. This marketing agency was built off an idea that I had that thought like, you know, I know what no record label ever approached me. I never been approached by no one. Um, no one has interest in me. I don't know. For some reason, my branding is insane. But, you know, I had a couple of people reach out to me in terms of A&Rs, but nothing crazy. 
and you know i want to have a platform out there to get organic exposure for other people so they don't have to go down the same road i did i spent years making the best music you know getting the most craziest cars craziest music videos all that stuff but when it came down to my marketing i really didn't know what i was doing so I really dug down and did some research on how to build a brand, what a brand even is, how to get your music out there and get, the, get your music heard. Eventually to the point where, you know, I, I started seeing success with our clients. You know, um, I only can make so many music videos to market and they've been doing pretty successfully. You know, I'm pretty blessed in the position I am. You know, I'm getting a couple hundred thousand views. Uh, my YouTube channel is at like 30K myself, personal YouTube channel. We have millions of views on our YouTube channel as well. So what I'm trying to say is that um, overall, like, you know, it's looking pretty successful, but I really am really focusing on the talent that we have on our agency and trying to blow them up because that's what really matters to me. Yeah, that's that's really good. That's really good. You know, you should be focusing on others more than your own career because I feel like you you have taken a hiatus from from like music for a long time. Yeah, now. man. Yeah. The music is music is always there for me. I love making music, but just sometimes I have to put the music aside to go ahead and you know take care of business. Um, but I'm always gonna be making music. I'll be literally like 50 years old, still probably making tracks and doing music videos to them. So music is not going anywhere for me. I just had to take a little break to focus on what you know what's important. But trust me, I got some crazy stuff in the works right now, and expect some big things coming soon for my. For yes, my end. sir. We were jamming to your music in Maldives as well. If you don't remember that, because we were yeah, you know, we were in the club jamming yeah, to your music, yeah, dancing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of questions that I got on our trip was we were posting, you know, like behind the scenes and all of that stuff for us in Maldives. People were asking us, "Are we are we on a break?" Are we, you know, like taking a holiday off and stuff like that? Like explain to the people how, how, how the process of marketing works and what do we need to market uh, a good song? Yeah. So first and foremost, I want to, you know, clear the room right now for the Maldives trip. We literally worked every single day while we we're there. Only took half the team. The other team was still running operations smoothly and made sure everything was perfectly normal. What was your question before that? My, my question was, what do you need? Like we had, we were limited to one, one Mbps. If you guys don't understand, we were <laughs> limited to one Mbps internet there, but the campaigns were still running smoothly. How how do you ensure an artist that you know like their their campaign won't be a, like a second priority to us because we're on because we're on a trip and stuff like that? Yeah, we have resources. The thing about it is that we have a team literally internationally like we have team members that you know didn't come to the trip but they will take care of operations and campaigns we we did planning before this before the ever trip ever took place we made sure that you know xyz guys were in charge of xyz campaigns the guys that were going on the trip will make sure that they're in charge of these campaigns so we are really organized when it comes to the agency it's not like we just go for a week and then we're not we're gonna go ghost we were still locking in clients. We were still making sure campaigns were being ran. We were still making sure our playlist, rate, uh, Facebook ad campaigns were running. Everything was still running perfectly and smoothly. All we just had to do was update and you know check frequently a couple of times here and there to make sure everything is running smoothly. While we have the team on the back end doing the heavy work. So yeah, we have a very systemized, organized fashion of how we run the company, and it's it's been pretty successful if I say so myself. Yes, sir, bro. Spent a lot of money on that on that trip as well, but uh, investing money into into different avenues as well. We talked about this on an entrepreneur podcast as well. Investing money money into your business, you should never be shy of that. Never yeah, be selfish. Th this in was that. an investment. Um, I would say this trip was a major investment because it really gave us a refreshment of. Um, bondage like it really gave us a brotherhood you know we were more close to each other we slept in the same rooms we shared the same jokes you know we ate the same food it gives us like a more you know united closer feeling and you know connected us in a way that you know just coming to office for a couple hours and then leaving just can't so i'm really happy that we had that trip we had an amazing time we had a lot of fun but we didn't let the you know fun phase us we still were business oriented and every time i asked you guys you know what's going on you guys always had an answer for me so that was really you know i really appreciate that and you know now we're just more motivated than ever to really knock this month out and just make sure everything is running extremely smoothly and blow the campaigns up yes sir we're gonna go more in detail about the trip on our entrepreneur podcast if you guys you know like are interested in the details what we did there and all of that so keep an eye on out for that but uh on the music point of view uh, the island resort that we went to, Digu Fire, it was called. It was a safe heaven for vloggers, bro. Why I feel like that is because every single track that they played was a cover art. Like oh, yeah. no track was from the original That's artist. Smart. It was from it was from cover artists. You're bro. right. So like, <laughs> if you're an independent artist, you can probably potentially sign a deal with the resort, get your music. That's the cover of a famous song because they don't want to do copyright. 
you know, if they put, if they should, like, you know, play music in their restaurants or their resort, they can't get copyrighted because, you know, Justin Bieber won't allow them to play their music in their resort. So what he can do or what the resort can do is actually get covers for those specific songs and get just, you know, talented artists out there here and there to make songs that are pretty much the same song just to cover. And now they're paying that artist out as, you know, like a $10,000 deal or something like that because those islands, those resorts have money. Yes, sir. We were, we were going in detail about that, you know, like how much money they make and all of that stuff. Because yeah. uh, uh, while we were there, we saw two performances. One was an open mic. The other was a DJ performance. And they were like paying peace to those people. You oh, can, yeah. They're, they're people, people can approach these resorts and, you know, like book themselves. Yeah, so in if you're an artist out there, like a little idea or a tip, what I would personally do is actually send in like, you know, um, a demo video of pretty much you performing and you know just send it out to like all these resorts and maldives and stuff like that you could probably actually get a free trip maybe they'll fly you out because you're super talented or they love something about you and who knows man you could probably stay there for free a couple of thousand dollars and just knock it off and just live there for free for a couple of days or whatever get a get a deal going on with them or get a deal with all the resorts i'm sure that artists that uh, performed at the that the resort that we went to probably performed at like six seven other resorts as well so i mean you know, you could do your thing, especially if you're an artist and they, you know, they always need, you know, people that are actual artists and have talent, you know, and just have someone that could perform for them. So, you yes, know. sir, bro. Another thing that I was looking into was finding the owner of the resort, because I feel like we can, you know, like make a, a deal with him to play the art the the songs of only our artists in that resort mm. as you know like as opposed to covers of of famous songs awesome. we can play original songs by our own artists and you know like uh, get yeah. get those marketing that way because yeah. uh in that island bro we had nothing to do except listen to music and just wipe <laughs> out it was just you know like a chill, get, chill get, get a get a tan swim for a while then come back and listen to music that was everything that we had to do yeah <laughs> it was that it wasn't uh what we planned but that was what we got bro yeah. but uh Investing into investing into you know like different ventures and all of that, so we invested into our trip. Uh, but we are investing into uh, more playlists as well. Yeah, uh, how's so, that going, dude? It's amazing. So we just invested another three thousand dollars into the Facebook ad account budget. So what that basically means is we have three thousand dollars to pretty much reach out to about I would say three hundred to four hundred thousand new potential listeners that are going to reach out and listen to our playlist and save them and listen to them for future use. So we're really in a good position right now because we're going to be launching this campaign, I would say, any day now. And once this campaign is launched, it's going to be really successful and we're going to get a bunch of new fans that, uh, coming to our playlist to come in and get exposure to new artists or discover some new talent. So if you're an artist out there and wants to get exposure to this you know, uh, new fan base, dude, send us a DM, guys. It's an amazing opportunity and you guys will jump on it and you guys will see so much growth. So the playlist that we have out right now, you know, we're doing, I would say 50 to 60,000 monthly listeners per playlist. But if we do this ad campaign, it goes out successfully. You know, we could potentially jump that number up to 100 to 110,000 monthly listeners per playlist. And that's insane numbers. For sure. Yes, sir. Also, this is the development phase of the playlist thing. We, we're currently only drafting people that have good music. Yeah, in a couple of months, you know, like once the playlists are doing those millions of monthly listeners, we're going to yeah. be charging way more and getting, you know, like maybe the, the middle kind of music in as well for people that are willing to pay that extra buck to yeah, get their so music on the playlist. It's just going to get more exclusive with time. So if you're an artist out there really wants to get into our Labalu family, because we have like specific clients that we love and we'll put them as first priority because they've been with us for a very long time. If you want to get in that little inner circle, you know, the best way to do it is start now. And then once we grow, they grow with us. They you know they get the access first. They get the new access to the new softwares that we use, the new databases that we use, all that stuff. So actually, we just got a new database for Lil Uzi Vert. Literally 17 million of his followers. We got over 300,000 of their, uh, their fans' information. So now what we can do with that information is go ahead and start sending out campaigns, marketing campaigns to those fans, pretty much exposing them to new artists that sound like Lil Uzi Vert. So they'll automatically be interested because they already listen to Lil Uzi Vert. So they'll, you know, let's just say Lil XO out there or some like, you know, Lil, you know, some rock star kid rapper guy that just started making new music and he sounds just like Lil Uzi Vert and just like he, he you know, resonates with that fan base. You know, we could drop a email campaign to those 300,000 people. Yo, check out our new artist, you know, Lil fill in the blank, <laughs> you know what I mean? And just get that artist to go crazy for sure with that Lil Uzi Vert fan base. And that Lil Uzi fan base is not organic. It's literally just, you know, we're marketing to that fan base. 
once he gets that fan base and that initial organic reach um, by all the email people, by everyone that we emailed and all those people that are coming from the emails, then that's where the organic, uh, the organic reach starts. So now YouTube or SoundCloud or Spotify understands that a bunch of people that listen to Lil Uzi Vert is also listening to this artist. Now the organic algorithm is going to push it like insane because we already targeted all the people that follow Lil Uzi Vert. Those same people are listening to this artist that sounds like Lil Uzi Vert. Now it's only a matter of time to the YouTube algorithm just pushes his music to all the Lil Uzi Vert fans that he gets millions of views. So all those millions of people are now going to get access to this little new artist that we broke in. Why? Because we used Lil Uzi Vert's data. Isn't yes, sir. Yeah, thing? bro. That's beautiful. Also, people don't understand. Like when you jump on a campaign with us, the first like couple of days, the first days are when the accelerator is pushed down, bro. Because yeah. the first couple of days we have to push hard. And after that, we just let the algorithm do its thing and just, you know, like keep pushing it. But we have we take the foot off the gas a little because uh, the algorithm them is pushing it for you yeah but, so uh, for artists out there that trying to figure out how the algorithm works you can't push a song after a year you know the initial time where i've done the most research i've been literally balls deep into this stuff is the first 7 to 14 days you need to push that aggressively your 50 percent of your budget needs to spend be spent in that 7 to 14 day period of that drop because that's the most important time where your uh, your reach is going to be allowed to be accessed to more people. Eventually, at the third, fourth week, your reach is limited. YouTube is actually finding out that people do not want to click on this video, so it's going to kind of shadow ban or you know soft ban your reach. So it's not going to allow you to get access to more and more people. If the video is doing good and if you have a correct budget that you're being you know you're pushing this YouTube video to the more people, eventually more and more people are going to you know listen to it and watch it and it's going to fall into a snowball effect and just it's just going to just naturally increase in views but if you don't put that initial marketing budget into that song or that music video it's going to you know kind of limit your reach potential for how much views yes you're sir get. coming off like music platforms onto social medias uh we just launched our instagram alpha campaigns as well yeah uh, how are those coming along oh right now God, bro <laughs> those are insane so if you're an instagram you know artist or just have an Instagram account and you want to bring traffic to it, guys, we have some of the craziest stuff in the works right now. No one can touch our softwares. So like I was showing you that same way that we tracked the Lil Uzi Vert following, we can target, we can target any single following on Instagram, freaking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, just by a single so what we first do is we extract the data so we have softwares that take all of that data rip that data from the fan base look the baby has like 10 20 million followers we rip all of his followers data okay this might be illegal but it's, it's, been working. It's, it's public information though. It's public it is inform public information yes. so you can figuratively speaking go through each of those 10 million people and take their phone numbers take their emails take their usernames and run your own campaign after freaking 10 years you might be lucky to you know send a million emails but we have softwares that go into the baby and scans all of his followings, all of the millions of people that follow him and pretty much rips that data and puts it in a sheet where we can use that sheet to send email campaigns to. So the normal average Joe, the average artist does not have access to this information. We actually spent tens of thousands of dollars. This is probably the most expensive project. We spent tens of thousands of dollars to build this software that allows us to do this ripping of Instagram information. So now we can promote our artists in the coolest way. So we can do 30% the baby, 60% Lil Uzi Vert, 10% you know Kid Leroy, and we can just mix and play in with a bunch of different you know audiences and see what works best. And let's just say the baby is working, you know, way better than you know, Kid Leroy will push for more the baby. And you know, it's just the sky's the limit with this. Yes, sir. And reaching this kind of audience, like if you if you're gonna reach it out to, you know, like Facebook and Instagram ads, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. But these softwares, these are homegrown. We grew them with a with a software expert who who, you know, like uh coded this all of software yeah, for yeah. us so it's in-house on us we're just charging people for the money that it takes to extract things and you know like just upkeep the software i'm gonna tell you why though 
So the reason that we're only charging the bare minimum of how much something costs in terms of the campaigning. So we don't want to make money off this. Our goal isn't to make money off this. Our goal is to actually, when you pay for your marketing campaign, we go ahead and start using that software to extract the data from the baby, Kid Leroy, Lil Uzi, whoever. Um, so that data is now ours. So that is added to our, in, uh, you know, our infantry. So we get to add 100,000 to baby, you know, 200,000 Lil Uzi Vert, 1 million Kid Leroy, all those fans. So now we have access to those fans. So every time you want to work with us, we have access to that fan base now. We could offer more affordable campaigns. And now we work with 100 different artists. Each of those 100 different artists have 100,000 different fans that they're targeting. You know, you do the math on that. You know, we could go ahead and just target a bunch of people and just take over the world pretty much. Yes, sir. That's, that's the same with Facebook and Instagram ads with us as well. We run these ads for over 300 plus artists every single month. So it costs us in bulk. And, you know, like it's... Um, it's business 101 when something costs in bulk it's it's le relatively cheaper to when yeah. you know like you're you're running your own campaigns individually we have data dude that the, the beauty about it is just you know whoever has the most data has the most power so if you have the most data if you have the most emails you have the most power you can sell your company for millions of dollars because you have millions of email instagram or millions of em email subscribers whatever so the same thing for facebook so say we have tens if not fifties of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on these facebook ads all of that data that we've been sourcing and extracting and getting it for those playlists and all that stuff all that big mixing pot of data we can now use it to run super targeted ads for our artists and for our own playlists and for our own marketing agency so now we have so much resources that we have in the palm of our hand that we can just rip the world apart, literally. I'm not joking. Yes, sir. Just to reiterate what you just said, uh, at the end of the day, this this is a company. We need some kind of profits and all of that stuff. But we're, you know, like we're uh, smart with our profits. This is a long term game for us. We're entrepreneurs. We're, you know, like up and coming. Yeah, we this believe isn't, yeah, in long term. We, we believe in long term. Even we, if we have to put money in from our own pockets into the business uh, to, you know, like pay for people's campaigns. If you believe in the long term future of the company, in the long term future of your own career, in our artist career, yeah. we'll spend money off our own pockets. And uh, just to explain this to people that are, you know, like my might not understand this, I'm going I'm to give example of our playlist. So currently we're charging the bare minimum for the playlist for people with the top tier music. We're charging that. After a couple of months when the playlists are doing, you know, like plus million monthly listeners, we're still going to be doing this for the people with the top tier music. But for people, you know, like that, that might have a lot of more money than them, but might have not good enough music. We're going to be charging way more for them. We're yeah. going to be charging well over a thousand dollar per placement for people uh, in a couple of months when the players are doing a million monthly listeners. Yeah. And after a couple of mo months after that, when the players are doing insane kind of numbers, we're going to be charging a lot more to people with the good music as well. So it's a long term game for us. At the end, we're getting profit, but we're getting profit at the end of a year year yeah. than rather right now because uh, this this is a really good time to work with us because uh, currently the playlist that we're doing we're investing currently money into them we invested two thousand dollars in the past week we're, we're trying to you know like budget a, a couple of thousand more in the next upcoming month and this is a good phase to work with us because the playlist and everything this company is in, is in a development phase we're charging relatively less right now because uh, we're going to be charging way more in the future for sure yeah for sure man so you you pretty much hit the hit the nail on the yes, hammer yes sir yeah so on on that topic let's let's talk about spotify playlists and all of that stuff uh while we were away in maldives a uh, couple of purge purges happened on spotify yeah, the, a the lot of spotify yeah, a lot of tracks getting down a lot of playlists taken down so, yeah, all of that uh, stuff. what i've personally seen is actually a couple of curators that i've been in business with um, got their Spotify playlist taken down and not because, you know, they're driving fake traffic or bots or anything like that. It's because they were selling um, these specific curations of the playlist. So the reason that we don't charge for our playlist is because it's kind of against term, terms and conditions of Spotify. But these guys didn't. These guys were in it to make profit. We're not in it to make profit like he just said. We're actually in it for the long game and try to grow our playlist as much as we possibly can to really potentially reach a new fan base to leverage that to make more money. But these guys, the curators that we just saw got purged is those guys were trying to sell it for profit. And the, the guys that are trying to sell it for profit got crushed because Spotify just came up with a new update, pretty much purging all Spotify playlist curators that are charging excessive amounts for their playlist uh, placements. So let's just say, you know, 
um, we have a few. I don't want to say any names or anything like that, but we have a few playlist uh, curators that got four or five of their playlists gone. Literally, their permanent permanent ban of their accounts. It's insane. But uh, I want to talk about this in more depth, maybe in another podcast, because this is you know like a very very slim rope. It is. It has two sides to the coins. What it isn't this the simil- isn't this similar to charging for features? If you're charging for a feature, isn't that same to charging for someone to be playlisted? Because at the end of the day, if you're featuring someone on your track, if you're a famous artist, you're giving them exposure. And if you're charging someone to be on their playlist as a creator that has you know like good reach, you're charging them to give them the same kind of you know like exposure. That's exactly true. I'm a hundred percent agree with you. Like um, Spotify should realize that you know just because they're a music platform doesn't mean that they have people that are doing business on it you know it's a it's a it's a platform and you know whenever there's a platform there's someone that's selling something on a platform whether that be instagram facebook tiktok snapchat um spotify you know you should be able to leverage your you know hard work of curated playlists uh to artists that you know really want to get heard and i don't really think that there should be a big issue about uh, getting your playlist out there, and, you know, charging for people to come onto your playlist after you work so hard on growing it. There's really no issue for me. But play uh, what Spotify sees on their end is that um, artists are getting scammed for some reason. They think that artists are getting scammed and these playlists aren't, you know, legit for whatever reasons. Um, even though we're spending thousands of dollars on Facebook ads, uh, you know, Spotify, they think that playlists aren't legit or maybe the other curators or, who, you know, the, the, the one percenters that just are putting a bad reputation for Spotify playlisters. Those guys, those, those are the guys that are getting purged and uh, the ones that are selling uh, the placements. But what I'm trying to say is that um, Spotify does not want to see you sell or uh, bought playlists. Bro, uh, playlists with fake streams, tracks with fake streams should be taken down 101%. Yeah. Yeah. But people that are selling, you know, like legit placements on legit playlists, they, they this is a, you know, like a full-time job for them. The, yeah. the curators that we work with, the, I've talked to them personally, it's a full-time job you for them. You want something funny? So then tell me why a Spotify curator on the editorial playlisting gets, gets paid. They, they get paid, right? What do they get paid for? Placing music on that freaking playlist. They're, they're getting paid a salary from Spotify for putting music on a freaking playlist. So why can't a Spotify employee do that, but an outsourcer or a freelancer that has his own playlist that Spotify allows you to have, you're allowed to have your own playlist on Spotify. It's not like it's a freaking magical hack. You know, there's a playlist, make a playlist button, you find and drive traffic to your playlist. Why can the you know freelancer not, you know, charge for playlist but the spotify editorial playlister gets paid a salary to put music on the playlist bro spotify is a shady shady yeah. place i want to throw some more shade at them if you're an artist that you know like try to put their music on spotify uh for for you know like making money go luck with that spotify pays so so less for for the track that is getting you know like so much traffic i feel like spotify is so stingy with their money they yeah. don't let you know like because uh, i feel like the people that are you know like curating playlists they're spotify employees they're paying you know like a cut i think a commission to spotify <laughs> for their playlist to keep running and i feel like if you know like individual freelancing uh curators start paying a commission to spotify as well uh they let their playlist stay as well but uh people that you know like don't want to pay that commission because it is a full-time job for them spotify did nothing for them they yeah. started with absolutely nothing they created their own playlist they added the first track to the playlist they had the first fan to their playlist yeah. and now they have a lot of tracks That's they insane. have a lot of fans it's their own hard work but yeah. as they're not paying commission it's it's you know like allegedly allegedly yeah. they're not paying so commission Spotify yeah, just Spotify. wants to make all the money and how are they going to make money is they actually re- uh, just released a new uh, tool called the marquee tool and this is going to allow you to do spotify ads and these spotify ads are completely ridiculous or garbage from what i've seen that you're way better off running a facebook uh a campaign to your music than a spotify campaign they're overpriced they're not effective and you can't target the right audiences uh, Facebook, at least, can you can target an audience that is correctly going to be proportional to the type of demographic you want. But the marquee tool that on uh, Spotify, it's kind of trash. And I think Spotify is just getting butt hurt because they can't promote their own tools. They're like, fine, if you guys don't want to run Spotify ads, I'm just going to take all your Spotify playlists because screw you. Yeah, bro. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. Spotify is a really good platform to be found as an upcoming artist. And I feel like that is the only good thing about Spotify. They have good, you know, like... Uh, 
good signings for their podcast and all of that stuff. You know, like good people make podcasts on Spotify. But the way the company is ran is really shady. And uh, I feel like we should go more in depth in that on uh, another podcast, yeah, we'll maybe on the them. maybe on the entrepreneurship, because uh, people there might be interested in us breaking down, you know, like how the Spotify structure works. Because yeah. uh, uh, recently, a uh, football club that I watch, a soccer club that I watch, Arsenal, they got a bid from uh, the owner of Spotify. He didn't even own, you know, like 20% stock and he still was a billion billionaire. <laughs> uh, I feel like Spotify makes a lot of money, but uh, that just, you know, like they try to keep all of the money to themselves, not investing back into their business. And uh, I really want to break their business structure down and see, you know, like who's making the most money because uh, for sure they're not paying artists nearly as much as the artist is worth. Yeah, there's some stuff going on, but um, yeah, we'll definitely talk about that in the mm -hmm. next podcast. Behind the guys, scenes, this is going to be the end of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, hopefully, you guys learned a little bit about how this our company works, a little bit more about marketing strategies that we use and implement in our own business. And hopefully, you guys learn something and you know take something away from these videos. You know, we want to make these videos for you guys so you guys can learn new things every day and make sure that you're smart and better yourself every single day as an artist. And we want to make sure make yes, sure you're sir. the best artist. Uh, as an ending note, I just want to give a big shout out to a person who called me uh on the marketing page and just he just called me to say uh that he watched our podcast and the podcast gave him a lot of good insight into how marketing companies work who he should be working with he said he's uh ready to invest into his you know like uh, career going forward but awesome. uh watching our podcast gave him a better insight of how the business works and how he can blow you know like better he didn't want anything else from me he didn't want you know like talk mm -hmm. about other stuff he just wanted to give me a big shout out and yeah. said you know like shout thank out you all for the fans out there yes man. sir let's he's, get it and uh, yeah, big shout out to you guys as well. Dropping comments of things that you want us to discuss in the next, next podcast. Uh, we have a lot of good topics lined up ourselves as well. But if you guys want any you know, like specific things that you're doing that, you know, like Google might not answer them. Uh, we, we're going to answer them for sure. And uh, anyways, uh, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's Ish and peace.